so we're based up in the north of Scotland, in the Scottish Highlands, and we use wild venison from the local area, which we um, produce a range of charcuterie from. So we do salamis, chorizos, um, all produced up in the Highlands here, and we sell that to independent retailers and food service across the UK. So this film um, is going to tell the story really, you know, where our, our source, where we source our meat from and um, yeah, our values of, of a company as, as a family. Fantastic. Yeah, good, good indication about uh, the area where the deer are coming from, you know, and how they're uh, harvested. Absolutely fantastic. Well, I've, I'm so excited to watch this film. As I say, it, it's, it's the last event in Terry Madri Fringe, but I don't, you know, as we say, it's last but not least. I think all of us are really, really looking forward to this. Um, as they used to say when I was a little boy on television, we're going to run the VT, so let's run the film. Um, anyone who has any questions about this, there's a Q&A box. I think most of you now know how this works. Anyone who's got any questions, um, pop those in the chat box, in the question and answer box. They'll appear on my screen. It won't appear on Anya's um, screen. Um, but what will then happen is I will then ask her and, and Jan the questions as we go after the film starts. So we're just going to start the film now. And here we go. and regionality are key factors in slow food production, then you can't get any closer to the source. It's like growing grapes on a vineyard and pressing the wine and making it locally, but then you have to grow your grapes here even further, we just harvest wild grapes. There are no natural predators left in, in Scotland for deer, so they have to be managed by man. The best way to describe is that as soon as you start the stalk, within very little time you merge with nature, you become one, you blend in. And I think that aspect is a great experience, you know, where you come down to the roots of the ancient hunter-gatherer element in it. scale they really look at which deer they're going to take out so it might be an old animal or it might be an animal with a defect or it might be an animal with a problem so they just want to keep a very healthy herd so ultimately that's how they decide what they're going to be culling.
ethical sustainability, both things, I think, merge here. You know, th these animals have, have a free life. You know, there's no intervention of any kind. They, they get bored in the wild, they graze in the wild, they survive in the wild, and only because the population is growing, we take a number of deer out. grass-fed meat that people now see as really high quality meat. That's wild venison. the animal. So when we get an animal we know exactly where it's coming from. We know where it's been shot and what date, so it's very traceable. From the Netherlands in 2000 to Scotland when we got offered a job on a small country estate and part of the job was deer management so we suddenly you know got access to this wonderful venison and Jan Jacob started experimenting with the cuts of meat and we built a small smoker in the garden and um, started to uh, make some products and that's really how you know our company was born in 2003. I'm from a food producing background, family-wise. Growing up, you know, I grew up as a, as a kid in, 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 a, in an environment where still everything was cooked from scratch. You know, we, we didn't do prepared food. I was always inspired by raw ingredients. In wild DAC, you see, you see a reflection of the seasons, and it, it's vastly important for us to select the right consistency. In springtime you see that animals are gearing up for building up fat reserves, while in winter time it's the opposite aspect. So we have to sort of sail through all these variables to, to create a consistent product. Often the, the parallel of a good wine springs to my mind when it comes to charcuterie. You, you, you use your base ingredient, you apply a technique of, of fermentation and drying and, and blending it all together. It's the art of, of doing that right, you know, the, the same that applies to a good wine or a bad wine, you know. It's all down to the skill, to the fermentation type, to the speed. As soon as you start speeding up, the process that, that nature has intended for that process, then, then you sacrifice quality. Scotland 
doesn't have a history in charcuterie production as the continent. Probably, has probably something to do with the weather and the climate here. So it's a lot wetter, so you don't really get the, the drying conditions as you get in Italy and Spain and France. So I think what, what we do is something quite unique. What makes our venison salami different, it's, it's pure wild venison, we don't add any pork. So it's quite a unique a salami, you know, really made with local wild venison, so ultimately a very Scottish salami. For us it's really important to have a sustainable way of life living in the highlands for the children just to really be close to nature and living off the land you know, we grow our own vegetables we make everything you know food from scratch and that's really important and then ultimately having having a business making a sustainable product is just all a big part of our way of life as a family, eating together has always been such a big part of it. It's not only consuming the food, it's, it's all setting the table, just sitting together, having good conversations. It's all such an important part of a meal. is really the ultimate sharing food you know making big platters sharing stories sharing food being together speak for everyone was just the most magical magical film I, mean, I just saw it and saw it as a love affair to Scotland and a, and a love letter to the Highlands as much as it was about your business um, it was just absolutely beautiful um, people are already diving in just saying just how beautiful the film was um, it absolutely oh, that's, that's lovely to hear no, thanks for that. Thanks yeah we, we got a local filmmaker Lizzie McKenzie and and she really was able to capture just yeah what we're we're about and yeah what the area is about so yeah wonderful and we got a local local girl um playing the Klarsach so beautiful music Helena Rose and just yeah really lovely nice to work with local people it, it just captured the whole essence of what you do and the and the, and the highlands and and the quality of your product and the craft and just just the beauty of it. Um, I know that there is a tasting element to this as well. So um, people are popping in some questions and so forth. I'll happily take those and we'll 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 ask both of you those questions as we go. But maybe you can tell us a little bit about the tasting. Um, and as we have the tasting, then maybe as people have questions, I'll ask you the questions. And we can a little bit like how you ended. We can chat and eat at the same time around the, around the metaphorical table. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so we uh, we've got two products here. I suggested two products, you know, for the tasting. So maybe Jacob can tell you about the salami first, our award-winning salami. <laughs> yeah, here uh, one of the packs, you know, the the green pepper salami. Um, it's really the product where it all started with, you know, uh, one of my first products uh, um, I made in 2003, so a, ra a rather long time ago. Um, yeah, to our surprise, you know, it, it started attracting um, quite a bit of interest and, and when, we, when we supplied this to various uh, um, sort of awards, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we were quite uh, su surprised that, you know, we were uh, we were attracting an interest and, and being an awarded uh, various awards, you know, so they, they started to think, well, there must be something right with it, you know, it's, 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 it's not only us, you know, that we were passionate about, but people appreciate what we're doing and uh, and, and so then from, from 2003 really onward, this, this product, uh, it hasn't changed, you know. It, over time, I would say, you know, consistency. Um, what what we see happening over the years that uh, the product becomes more rounded, more balanced, and I think that's to do with, you know, with within this environment of fermentation, you establish cultures, mm -hmm. and these cultures are very unique to the product you make, and 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 that's. Uh, the similarities to cheese and wine are, are very familiar there. And, and I think that shines through now after, you know, 17 years of producing that slowly we we're getting there, you know, it, it's time, time and time and time. We can't, I, I don't think you can make this product from scratch in a different environment. So. And it's a pure, it's a pure venison salami. Yeah. So we don't add any pork. That's when we started. We really wanted to make a pure venison salami. And everyone told us, you know, you can't, you need pork. You need to add pork. But um, Jan Jacob was adamant, you know, he wanted to be, it be pure venison. So lots of experiments. And, um, but we managed to do that. So it's 100% venison, hasn't got any pork, no pork fat. So it's a very lean salami with a lot of flavors and this one uh, we do three different salamis but this one is spiced with green peppercorn so that is really our, our yeah i think our product we sell the most so um, yeah that's the how long how long does it take to age that product so um we start fermentation uh, about, it's about 10 to 12 days for the fermentation process to round off then another fortnight uh, of slow drying you know we try to dry consistently a percentage every day and then it matures for another 10 days and then it's it's stable you know it's it sort of matured out from there on much what you see um, you can dry it further and further mm -hmm. but but I would say the peak is in in about four to six weeks uh, you know, there about, you know, and then after that, you know, it's by the time it's it's uh, it's ending up uh, on the retail shelves, I would say an average 12, 12 to 14 weeks, you know. Okay. And for people tasting this at home, what kind of flavours do we expect to find in your charcuterie? Obviously meaty flavours, it's a, it's a meat product, but what kind of flavours are we are we tasting? Um, no, we, we're quite unique in that we also smoke our product, as you see in the film. So we, we apply uh, um, a little bit of beechwood, you know, for a, for a, for a hint of, of, of smokiness. Um, what, what we get, we get a freshness from the pepper. It, it's like a, a fresh peppery taste of the green peppers. Um, the saltiness is, is, is mellow. Um, there's an acidity in there. Um, how would I describe it, you know, the, again, that varies with time, you know, but on the peak, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's texture and, and, and softness, you know, and a meatiness, uh, tones of the ingredients, you know, the tones of the pepper are, are, are on, on, on the top, really, and then it's a blend of, 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 of spices that together give this, it's hard to describe, just, just a very pleasant feeling, a very pleasant taste overall. To pinpoint a specific note, I find it hard, you know? 
There's pepper tones, and then there's a mellowness and a, a sort of an acidity building up, and then at last, you know, a warmth to it. So Danica is asking us, what would you recommend that we drink alongside the venison salami or the venison chorizo? I, I think a, a nice red wine is, is delicious, you know, don't ask me which one, you know, I'm not a wine expert, but that's that's really nice. Uh, yeah, lovely, lovely with a with a wine. Yeah, whiskey, a lot of people have a, have a whiskey, you know, really Scottish, probably more yeah. sort of a local. I think as a nibble, as a nibble, uh, sort of in the evening, yeah, a good whiskey goes well, you know, especially in the winter times, you know, it's sort of heartwarming and, and then it marries well, you know, and, uh, but equally, you know, the, I think I think on a, on a on a on a good summer's day, you know, with, with a good or fresh um, white wine, you know, then it, it, it wouldn't go wrong, you know. Yeah. I think you've inspired someone because they're saying that the whiskey pairing sounds particularly good. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're you're inspiring people. If other people have any um, questions relating to the products, do let me know and I'll ask them. Um, as we're going, many, many people are commenting on just how beautiful the film was. Um, too many comments to actually name everyone, but um, I, think, I think everyone has just fallen in love with, you, with, your, with your film. And the second product you were particularly um, going to be, um, going to be um, looking at this evening was, because we're doing yep. what? It's the venison chorizo. Yep. So that's again a uh, hundred percent venison chorizo we we produce. So that's um, we don't add any pork either to that one. So pure wild venison, and um, it's a ready to eat chorizo. So you can cook with it because our the chorizo are quite soft. So it, it's nice to cook with them as well. But um, yeah, lovely to eat on its own too. And you can make you know, it fried, more fried with uh, you know a quick fry in a pan with with. With scallops is my favourite, or monkfish, you know, medallions of monkfish. Yeah. That uh, and, and a, a little slice of uh, fried chorizo on top uh, really brings it together. Yeah. It's a very good combination, you know, one of my favourites. Uh, once you fry them, the, the the peppers come out, you know, there's a, there's a small amount of chilli in there to, to bring a bit of liveliness in there and a bit of a punch. Uh, when, you, when you fry them again, you know, the salt levels start to come out a little bit more. Um, and there's just sufficient amount of fat in there to, to keep it light, but to capture all those flavours and mellow them together, you know. Yeah. Well, Sue Lin has actually asked a question about cooking the chorizo, actually. And I think you've answered some of it already. She says the chorizo is delicious, so she, she clearly buys it already from you. Um, but if you fry it like ordinary chorizo, will it all melt away? Um, she's saying, will, will it shrink a lot if you cook it? No, no, not not as much as a normal chorizo, and you actually might have to add a little bit of oil or olive oil to start it off. You know, normally chorizo, you've got lots of fat, and um, you don't you get a little bit of fat out of it, but not much. And and it keeps it keeps uh, its consistency more than than a, you know the Spanish chorizo. I would yeah, say. Th th through the season we see a fluctuation of uh, of the fat level of the deer, and that represents us in the in the product. We can't really change that, you know. So, of if if you see slightly more fat, it's 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 going towards the, I would say the five percent mark, you know. Then it fries on its own quite beautifully, you know. If you're in the leaner months, you know, then you could add, but equally, you know, there's three percent. There's always three percent, about three percent fat in the product, you know. And it, it's adequate to just put it in in a hot pan, you know, and it, it fries away quite nicely. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the very slight variability in these products is what makes them so special because they're real and they are in their most natural state and they're, they're not homogenized. And that there is, that slight variation is what makes them exciting and special, yeah. though they obviously are consistent in flavor and, and so forth. Um, we have um, someone, Ari and Evelyn Brack, I, hopefully I pronounced their name correctly, um, are just saying how much they're enjoying everything and, um, um, and and um, sending their wishes to you. Um, oh, hello, Ari Evelyn. <laughs> the good friends. Lena Lovell um, is asking: Have your charcuterie been inspired? Inspired, sorry, by your Dutch heritage? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah. Yeah. There's a definite uh, spark. You know, I, I was in my 
well, pre-teens, you know, between nine and ten years, I think, you know, and um, weekly I had to do sort of a shopping run for my mum. And then we went to an abattoir, you know, it was quite a rural where, uh, where, where the butchers made all their own products. And, you know, I, I think I just, you know, the, the counter was sort of nose height, you know, at that time, you know. I could just peek over and I could see those people, those big guys making all the sausages and and I would get often, you know, um, when the time was right, I, I would get a dry, uh, what, what in Dutch is called, called droge worst, you know, that's like a dry a dry sausage, you know, uh -huh. which which is a mixture of, of drying and fermentation where, where the drying process is accelerated rather than a fermentation. And, you know, my week was made when, you know, I got away with, say, a little bit of cut off I could, I could chew on. And, and that left a lasting impression, you know, and then. Uh, that was really inspiration to do something with with and yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, Danica is asking because venison is generally um, leaner um, and has fewer calories. Um, she's asking, um, does your venison have less um, your venison chorizo? Sorry, have less calories because it has less fat than a conventional chorizo? Yeah. Yeah, a massive, massive difference. Mm -hmm. uh, I think commercially produced uh, chorizo sausages from pork generally. I would say the fat content is, is, is significant. We are topping 5% yeah. fat, you know, which is negligible. I think in, in an alternative pork sausage, you know, you'll start off at 20% to 35%, you know? Yeah. So a big, big difference. And again, when you fry it, you see that coming into sort of play, you know, that there, there is no greasiness. There is nothing there. You know, it's light. It's, it's not heavy on the stomach. I think if you're at five percent, you're probably legally allowed to set a low-fat product. Actually, at five percent, aren't you? I think we need could, to... could well be. I've never, I've never delved into the legalities of it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we're, we're there. I'm, I'm five percent always... is the limit. So I don't, I don't trust products when they say no fat. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, gen generally, if a, if a if a food product has to make a claim, then it's yeah. not a new flavour. But um, I think technically, to the law, you would be able to say that. Yeah. Um, yes, you're best off not saying that. Um, we have Yolanda and Lisa um, are just saying just what an incredible product and just um, how hard you will work and, and, and then sending wishes. Um, Brenda from Tasting Scotland Food Tours um, is sending congratulations on further three stars and the Great Taste Awards. Our congratulations as well as Brenda's. Thank you, that's for us. Salami. Yep, yep. Yeah. And she's also saying, have you ever experimented with venison and chocolate? Um, I I have added chocolate to venison stews, but not in charcuterie. No, not no. not in charcuterie. We no. haven't gone that far yet. No, you know, no, it's uh, no. <laughs> no, no. I'm sorry, <laughs> we haven't gone to, to that extreme. No. <laughs> Maybe something once you um, when you're very very busy. Maybe if you have a quiet moment, um, who has those? But maybe if you have a quiet moment, you can you can play. Um, Catherine is saying, um, "What a beautiful film!" I think everyone is saying this is a beautiful film. And the eating and pairing recommendations, um, and again, just just how much she's enjoying this this session. So yeah, oh, great. Do we have any more questions at all? Um, whilst that's happening, do, do you do you have any plans to extend the range? You obviously have quite a tight range, which is wonderful because you've got these incredible products which you're producing so consistently and so well. Um, is is this going to be your core range forever? Are you thinking about increasing the range or? Mm, not we're not really thinking at increasing mm. the range. You know, I think what we do, we want to do what we do well and and probably make more of the same rather than making lots of new products. So mm. um, we're we're currently you know the state in the business. So we're based in an old butcher shop we moved in in two thousand three, and it's bursting at the seams. And you know we we really need to leave there. But the last few years we've been trying to get planning permission to build new premises and. We actually just at the beginning of lockdown got granted planning permission after a long, long, long time trying to get it. So, you know, very thankful we got planning permission at last. But um, yeah, everything, you know, we've written a business plan and it's changed a little bit, you know. So um, <laughs> we're still working on it, but yeah, hopefully... With, with all the restrictions, you know, there, yeah. there is implications getting, yeah. getting a project off the ground, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
you're, 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 you're talking to various people trying to help you, but then, you know, people working from home, you know, and yeah. some materials are not available. It's all a bit, uh, you know, it's going to take a bit longer. Yeah. But, but hopefully, so that's that's the next stage, yeah, moving to new premises and yeah. so we can do more of the same. Great. So you have your website, of course, many of us are buying from you already and some will have bought um, some to, to have a taste at home. Um, but your website, greatgrandcharcuterie.com. Um, <laughs> and you have an offer on at the moment, don't you, Anya? So yes, yes, yes. So we've got an offer. If you use the code Terra Madre, there is a 10% discount uh, on the website. So we did that for before the tasting, but I'll leave it on live for a couple of more days. So if anyone would like to purchase after this, just use the code Terra Madre. But there, there you go. Everyone that is watching this, I'm sure, is going to want to, to, to do that. I, I know that I am. Um, someone is just asking a question. Um, do you sell your products in the south of England? Um, do, do you have retail outlets in the south of England? Yeah, so we, su we supply independent retail. So some of them we, we supply direct, um, but we also work with some distributors. So I don't, we don't always know where they end up. But for instance, in London, we're in Fortnum Mason, they sell the products and uh, quite a number of independent uh, delicatessens. But yeah, if, if they can't find it in their local deli or farm shop, tell them about us and um, then, you know, hopefully uh, we can, we yeah, can for, sell Yeah, for there. people looking for or a, a specific area just get in touch with us you know we can direct you to to somebody close you know um that's probably the best way forward if people specifically looking for a, for a retail outlet sure and, and what's the shelf life of your products because if we're buying online sometimes it can be great to buy online direct for you from you um we then support you directly um if we're buying online it's often easier to buy a little bit more if the shelf life's there if the, if the product's less depending on the product we can we can support our local independence but if yeah. we were to buy several packs from you how long would that last typically in the fridge three months so all our products got a three month shelf life in the packaging um yeah so so it's got a long time we also sell for instance salamis you know we showed the re that's our retail pack mm -hmm. but we also sell the salami whole so you get a big salami it's about 1.4 kilo and that actually will keep a long time as one piece it's a bit if you buy a big uh, chunk of cheese and it will slowly mature and dry in but you will get at least you know four weeks out of it so you can just slice loads Perfect. So I think also if we if we can't find a retail outlet, and it is important to support our independent delis and, and retailers at the moment, they're, they're also struggling. Um, but if not, then as I say, certainly go online. And at the moment with the Terra Madre discount, please go online, um, go to Great Glen Charcuterie, use your Terra Madre 10% discount, um, and you can make it worth your while by buying three or four packs. If it's going to last for three months, we could be I know what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be buying my Christmas charcuterie and my October charcuterie and my November charcuterie all now. Yeah. <laughs> so the danger, of course, is I'm going to eat all that charcuterie. Well, there will be no Christmas charcuterie. I will eat it now. But we but, don't mind. We yeah. don't mind. You can order again. Huh? <laughs> this is what I'm justifying to myself that I know that if I go on now, I can buy for Christmas. Um, there will be there will be an update on it. Um, yeah. I'll be buying from you again. I, I, I can see that's happening. But um, yeah. does anyone else have any questions um, or comments for um, Brian and Yao? I mean, if not, we will we will start to wrap up. But this film and this um, and this conversation that we've had will be online on our Terra Madre website um, towards the end of next week. So if you do go online or you find a retail shop with these products, um, you can then watch the video again. I think I'm going to invite friends around whilst I still can. Um, I know some of you probably can't do that at the moment, having just watched the announcement, but I think it would be just wonderful to watch that beautiful, beautiful film um, and share a glass of wine um, and eat some charcuterie with friends um, and just 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 enjoy it. It was just beautiful, beautiful cinema. Um, just checking the questions and so forth. So this is actually the last event of the Terra Madre Fringe, which is really, really sad. I said we've had 31 events since Thursday, just highlighting producers. We've had talks, we've had leading um, opinion um, thinkers, we've had parliamentarians, and we've had the most beautiful, beautiful films. Um, I, it's been a real privilege to spend that weekend with you. Um, it's just been amazing to end, um, not forever, but to, to pause um, with this beautiful film and, and speaking to Anya and, and Jan. Um, thank you very much um, to, to um, everyone at Great Glen, um, to both of you. Thank you to everyone who has been watching at home. 
Um, those of you that have supported the Terra Madre Fringe by making um, small donations, thank you very much for those if you've done that. But the most important thing is, as I say, to support our producers, support our artisans, um, and I'd encourage all of you at home to, um, to go on to Great Glen Charcuterie, use that Terra Madre discount, um, and have some charcuterie, if not for Christmas, eat, have that for now. Um, oh, someone's saying a round of applause. Um, a round of applause for everyone that's been involved um, in, um, in the Terra Madre Fringe. Um, that came from Wendy. Wendy has been an absolute superstar as well and champions all things Scottish. Um, I think it's just been a most wonderful experience. Um, I think it's no secret to say that we will be hosting this Terra Madre online fringe again. Um, we ran it as an experiment this time. Um, you'll see us back again soon. Um, to everyone that's taken part, thank you very, very much um, and good night to everyone and huge thanks to everyone at Great Glen.